Welcome back to week 27 of science. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Uh, this week, to start the week, we'll be finishing off our experiments with the water cycle process. So last week we went over uh, evaporation and condensation. So basically what we learned about last week is how Yellow Creek and Northmoreland Park or the Kiskey River ends up losing water and where that water goes. And that's how we get, so that's evaporation. And how we get condensation is all that water, remember, turns into vapor. That is stuff that goes up into the air that we really can't see, but if you're near it, you can actually feel the air being wet. And that is going to go up towards the uh, clouds. It's absorbed or sucked into the clouds, and then the clouds hold on to it. And then as the weather changes and the temperature changes, as we, as we found out, that's what causes condensation. And that's when that water vapor starts to turn into droplets again, and it stays in the clouds until the clouds need to release it. And then that's where we're going to do this week. So this week, we will talk about precipitation and collection. So think about it. If the uh, water vapors or the, the water evaporates, goes into the vapors, and then that eventually goes into the clouds, it needs a way to... Um, release that water. So that's what precipita precipitation is. That is rain. So when that vapor starts to change temperature and it eventually collects and turns into droplets, that's where the word raindrops come from. Because that vapor turns into little droplets or little tiny particles of water that you can see with your eye. Um, when the clouds are full, and that is how rain happens, it's not going to rain every day, and that's because we have to wait for the water vapor to fill up the clouds. We need that vapor to turn into droplets, and then when they're ready, when those clouds are ready to release or get rid of that rain, then that's where precipitation comes from. The rain will come down, and then it turns into the next thing we'll learn about this week, which is collection. When the water falls, it has to go somewhere. It has to cool. So that's either into the ground, and that's how our uh, that's how we do mud. Also, if you have a swimming pool, as you use your swimming pool, water goes out of it, so it gets low. If we don't have any precipitation or rain, then you usually have to put a hose into your pool uh, because the water has splashed out or if it's really hot from the evaporation process that we learned about earlier in the week. But collection is a big part of our water cycle because if we don't have a collection, then we don't have water. So whether that's in the Kiskey River or Yellow Creek or Northmoreland Park or the rain puddle at the end of your driveway, whatever the case may be, if we don't have a collection, then we can't have water. We would never have water flowing freely into our homes. We wouldn't be able to take those nice baths and showers inside. Um, so that's the importance of collection. Now, we will do this week, just like we did last week, we'll be doing experiments. So Monday and Tuesday, you guys will Zoom with me. On Wednesday, of course, we will have some kind of uh, Nearpod activity for all the virtual learning. Now, please remember, if you need us next week, send us a chat. We will be back in school. Teachers and parents have to be back in school on Wednesday. So just know that uh, if you're not getting an answer from your chat, you can always have somebody call the school. That's another option for you guys this week since we're, we're going to be back on Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, you will actually be uh, taking a look at some projects and you will be making your own water cycle process. So just like we have done for the past several weeks, we're going to give you a chance to be scientists and recreate these things that we are seeing. So as you get started through, uh, throughout the beginning part of the week, if you're confused on the water cycle process, please raise your hand. Please use your chat. I actually got my first chat of the year last week from somebody asking for help before we had to reach out to you guys. So that is wonderful to see. Please get a hold of me if you need me so that Thursday and Friday when you're looking into those projects and starting to create those projects, it goes a little easier for you. So you know how you do that. You use your chat. If you're in school, you raise your hand. Otherwise, let's jump into the second half of the water cycle and see what kind of cool things you scientists